Well, hi guys. I think it's time for me to do my first video since that channel update I did a, about a week ago. I'm not going to be doing an update video on the uh, MacBook or any of the other big videos I've planned quite yet because I'm still a little bit busy. But that and for the MacBook, I haven't. I'm trying to find time to get to it. But for now, we can settle with a uh, video, a holdover video for right now. This is a 1950s GE travel iron. A little bit of backstory on this. A couple months ago, when I was coming home one day, I saw this yard sale that every... It was towards the end of the yard sale, so they were giving everything away for free. So I stopped by and I grabbed a few things, and then I saw this. I saw it ex pretty much exactly as you see it. It's pretty complete. We've got the iron itself with the original cord, the original cloth cord, which I act, which I really do like. This uh, I believe it's a dark green with I believe white. I believe that's called a sawtooth, but I'm not sure. Unraveling it. If I can get this unraveled with one hand. Okay. It's honestly in pretty good condition. But when I first got it, this chrome was all spotted and gross looking, and there was little. Like, this was corroded to no end. The back wasn't really corroded. It doesn't really look that great on camera, but it is perfectly smooth. But what I used to get, to get it to come back to this shine was some um, turtle wax chrome polish and rust remover for uh, tire rims. It's all I had on hand, so I gave it a whiff, and it actually did a pretty damn good job. As for this, if does it work? Yes, it does. It actually works well. I've been using it. It heats up extremely quick, and it's just a wonderful lot. It just works. Moving on to what's inside the bag. Trying to open this. Please bear with me. First, we've got a little manual. Oh yeah, which I did forget to mention because this is the worldwide night, the worldwide version. It can uh, run on both 120 volts and 230 volts. And on the 120 volt side, you can run on both AC and DC current. So, that kind of dates how old this thing is. Another thing this thing came with. Hold on, the other one fill out. These little plug adapters. So, these would just pop on. Like that. And you have your foreign plug. These things are a little wobbly. I'm not sure if that's always how they've been or what. It doesn't. That's what I'm guessing. I'll pop that off later. We've got this little tag that was attached to it at one point, probably when it was new. And we've got the steam bulb. The original steam bulb. Oh, wait a minute. One other thing. This, which makes it a spray iron, and when you put on, when you, you can take off this cap, put this one on, it's just a little spray pump you can use to create a mist. But yeah. But one thing you're probably wondering is, compared to a new iron, this thing probably uses up much more electricity. Actually, no. 
when we look at the bottom of this, I'm not sure if you can see this, you can kind of see it says it takes 700 watts. Now uh, let's pull over a more modern iron. This is the typical iron you'd probably find at your local Walmart. And if we look at the spec sheet on this, where is it? Okay, let's see if we can zoom. There, you can kind of see it. 1100 watts. So, this actually uses more electricity than this. And I've also noticed that this warms up quicker than this. Because this practically is fully warm within 30 seconds. And that's on and that's on the cotton setting. As this takes a good minute and a half to fully warm up. I'm not gonna do a re I'm not gonna do a test time on this video, but I'm just yeah. But also, this one is quite a bit safer because it has a bunch of modern safety features like automatic shutoff and the bottom is in metal. So, this one, if I put it down somewhere, I would probably trust it if I had to go into the other room as this, I would probably want to keep attended to at all times. So, uh. Now taking this plug off. Just to prove to you guys okay. that this You know what, uh I'm gonna make a jump cut and we're gonna do a test of this iron. You know what I lied in the last clip? Let's actually do a warm-up test of both these. It's not going to really be scientific because this one doesn't have any type of indicator to say when it's fully warm, but this one does. So, let's get started. Just as another thing that I forgot to mention, with these switches, that metal part you see down there is actually live, I believe. In this, I believe it's a uh, Bakelite. This thing's made of Bakelite. That's what's, if this ever breaks off, you'd have to find something to replace it because you can't really touch that switch. The metal part. Anyways, let's get started. I'll give this one a head start. Slight head start. So plug that in. And then I'll put this on cotton. Okay, this one's fully warm. Is this one getting there? Let's try to do this one handedly. I know this is not how you iron, but I have nothing to hold this. And this is an iPad camera, so I can't put it down. Okay, now it's staying. I, eh, close enough. And this one's also fully warm now. This one glides a little bit easier. But yeah. So this one's actually a little bit slower, but it also does use less electricity, so you have that much. And it's just cool compared to that, because that, or that.
Anyways, that's really all I have to say. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.